Welcome back to Animal of the Week. In today's video, we're looking at a big chunky slug. The black sea hare, also known as the California black sea hare, is an extremely large species of slug. The largest on record weighed 14 kilograms and measured 99 centimeters long, making them the largest of any sea slug species on the planet. They are members of the family Aplicidae, which means they are sea hares. You can still call them sea slugs because that is a very loose term that applies to many different unrelated animals. But they are not nudibranchs, as they possess interior shells compared to nudibranchs that have no shell at all. The black sea hare only lives in one specific area of the world, the California coast all the way down to the Baja Peninsula, but nowhere else. At low tide they can be found in rock pools of the area, or at very low tide they may wash up on the beach, sometimes dying as they only have gills and need to be in the water to breathe. They need to stick to the shallows as they are bottom feeders, and can't handle a lot of pressure, so they mainly inhabit the neuritic zone of the ocean, never venturing into deep water. The reason for only living in California and Mexico is mainly to do with their feeding, but interestingly, many similar but slightly different species are found in other places like Washington. These big lumps are herbivores and feed essentially like hoovers. They kind of remind me of how a manatee feeds. They have a sort of plunger mouth part that goes along the bottom of the ocean ripping up algae to eat. The reason they live in California and are so successful here is because they enjoy brown algae, and the California coast has massive forests of this stuff. The fascinating thing is that the black sea hare most likely gets its colour from the brown algae, and other species of sea hare get their colour from whatever colour algae they are eating. The California sea hare eats red algae and so is more reddish. These sea hares produce a toxic in its skin as a form of defence, but the toxin is derived from the algae they eat. Brown algae produces this toxin, and so the sea hare is able to absorb this, taking on the colour as well. Obviously, it isn't the most nutritious stuff, and so the black sea hare has to eat a lot of it. But thanks to its only potential competition, the California sea hare, only eating red algae, they can easily keep up with the food demand to satisfy its pretty insane growth rate of about 5 grams per day. The reason for this insane growth rate is because these slugs only live for about a year, and so need to grow as fast as possible to reach their massive sizes. They also can't afford to waste any time when it comes to mating, so they are simultaneous hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female sexual organs present at all times, and are able to mate with themselves. However, they have also been found to mate with other individuals, but due to everyone having both sets of reproductive organs, everything goes very quickly. This is because a single individual is able to impregnate others while also being impregnated itself. Efficiency is key. The determining factor in who is the sperm donor and who is the recipient is size, with the larger being the sperm recipient to make any competition more fair, and all the smaller individuals to be able to reproduce. As if they had to fight the larger ones over who gets to give the sperm, they would fail and be stuck with the fertilised eggs, therefore being less likely to survive considering their small size and extra burden of eggs. However, because size is relative, some individuals become both, as they could encounter a larger individual and therefore give their sperm, but then encounter a smaller individual and so take on their sperm. Or in desperate times, they could just mate with themselves. But this isn't recommended, as it would result in a low genetic diversity and make the species weaker overall. Other than their toxins making their skin toxic, they have another interesting adaptation. When on land it's hard to see because, like a blobfish, they decompress quite a bit, but underwater you can see they actually have large, graceful membranes that look kind of like wings that they use to move. I wouldn't call them flippers or fins because they are structurally very different, so I'll call them membranes. They are used for movement, rippling along to keep the sea hair moving, and actually make them look almost graceful. On land they are far less so, but are able to sort of pull themselves along on the sand if needed. Due to their toxic defence mechanism, large size, and because they are mainly made up of water with little nutritional value, they have very few natural predators, which can be a problem if their populations get out of control. The only thing stopping them is competition from other black sea hares over food. As for humans, why on earth would we hunt these things? I personally hate slugs, so I'm never going to go near anything like this. The only threat to them is water pollution, ocean acidification, and warming. These can all have detrimental effects upon brown algae growth, which would lead to less food for the black sea slug. But as of now, they are fine. However, this could change. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, if you'd like to see more from us.